Hey everyone, so glad you could join us here today. Grab your coffee, join it, join us at the table for just a conversation, just to just to get to know get to know each other. And if you haven't been here before, I hope that you'll subscribe and share these share these stories with your friends. We all need encouragement. I have with me a, a special guest today. Her name's Brittany. She's a new friend that I have met, and I'm so excited that you're going to get a chance to meet her. How are you doing today, Brittany? I am splendiferous, and you? <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> I was going to try and say that back, but I, I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you do that and just put words together, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if I could do that right now. <laughs> it's all good in the hood. <laughs> so you're doing good. I'm doing great. It's okay. a fabulous day. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. What can go wrong, right? It's spring and it's raining and it smells great out there. So yeah, I love it. <laughs> Amen and hallelujah. <laughs> so, so Brittany, you know, you've got an interesting story. So first of all, I'm wondering, when did you meet Jesus and how did that happen? Well, it's, it's quite crazy because I, I met the Lord like personally when I was 20, I could remember like the, the day, the hour, the minute, and the second that I gave my life to Christ, which was in 2018 when I was 20 years old, October 3rd at 3 40 PM. Wow. I was listening to an audio and I was just like, you know what, Lord, I give my life to you because it was like a couple talking about like the, um, the day and the time that they had encountered Christ together. And I was like, that is so beautiful. And then I was like, you know what, Lord, I think it's time for me to give my life to you. So I did, but I remember it's funny because a lot of people run away from the Catholic church. And that was the only church that actually spoke to me when I was trying to get to know Christ. Cause I went to a couple churches when I was younger and my grandmother always used to say like, who lives in your heart? And we all say like Jesus, but what does that really mean? And then I remember I went to this church and the first time I went to mass, I remember I opened a bag of Dorito chips. I was I was reading Fifty Shades of Grey in the Mass. I phoned oh, to order takeout food. And then I also made a call to my girlfriend all during my first Mass. And the guy I went with was so irritated and so ashamed. But like a year later, we were not in contact anymore. And I decided to come into the church. And I come in and the Mass was like, um, they were talking about compassion, peace, patience, and love. And I remember it just hit me. And I was so blown away. And then like the next month I came in again, cause I was like, I want to see if this is legit, if this is real or whatever. So I go on again. And then I was like, you know what? Cause I was really into rap. I was like, you know what? I want to go see the G dog or whatever. Cause I thought that's what they called priests because I listened to a lot of rap. I was like, let me go see the G dog. Let me get dunked. Let me go see the man. Let's get baptism. Let's do this, man. <laughs> you can see me going to like the secretary and be like, yo, where's the G dog? <laughs> cause good. I was 19 at the time. So they're like, you mean the priest? I'm like, yeah, that man. And I like gave him a fist bump. I'm like, let's do this. And he's like, it's a process. I was like, you, I don't like a process. That's fast and efficient. And then anyway, <laughs> fast track, like at 21, I did get baptized. And but I I would probably say like a year and a half ago is when I started like intimately, intimately having such a deep like relationship with the Lord. I started speaking in tongues. I started being gifted with prophecy and everything. But you know, like the Lord works in us all so beautifully. And, but that's like a short, fast paced of my story, yeah. but yeah, so, oh, it's incredible what the Lord does for us. <laughs> oh, isn't that? Yeah. It's that it's so it's just been a couple of years then basically. Yeah. Yeah. Very brief. Cause I'm like, I'm basically 20, I'm just shy of 26 right now. So yeah, just okay. a couple of years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So because people will know us by our love, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is love. So what does love look like to you? To me, love is people. I don't know. It's always been people seeing, seeing people milling about, like, it could just be like the, the man in despair sitting on the side of the road. And then like, he just, he just sees like a can, like somebody gives him a can of pop or whatever that could like nourish him. And he's just so filled with joy and love to me is like joy and people. Like, it's just like the all encompassing of people and joy. Cause like the Lord put so many people on this earth so we could spread our love and our joy to people and I don't know I just see love as people and just all the little moments of the day like just the grass blowing in the wind the butterflies flying the birds the the singing 
like everything like life people just everything is love everything so, you can find love in everything so yeah so you're seeing it you're seeing him in the environment and then yes. the, and then the people he puts in your life yeah absolutely yeah that's good community we we're created for community oh absolutely a hundred percent and if you try to deny that the lord will put it in your face <laughs> Because I tried to deny it at one point and the Lord just put more people in my life. And I was just like, I can't deny it anymore. So <laughs> and we don't do well on our own, really. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't know if anybody has ever heard of the Christopher McCandless story, um, the Into the Wild book or the movie. He was like a man who was 22. I think he was full of pride and he just gave up and went into solitary confinement for like two years on his own. And he lived like I actually did that for two months and it was really hard. I became very lonely and I think I like solitude, but we don't like it as much as we think we like it. We need each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, for sure. So now recently um, you, you shared a bit about going to Brazil, but that sounded like it was a pretty sporadic idea. <laughs> so, so just, and I think, I think it's exciting that we can be obedient and just go where he sends us. Amen. And hallelujah. So, yes. So what happened with that? It just sounded really interesting. <laughs> so share with well, people what happened. It's so crazy. So I work a couple different jobs. One of my jobs is at McDonald's and I'm usually working in payment at McDonald's, which is like a little square area at McDonald's. And I remember I was taking payments. I was just standing there and like the Lord deposited Brazil in my head. Because I've been looking into like maybe Capernaum, maybe Net, maybe like other missions trips or whatever. And like the Lord never confirmed any of those because those are like three months to a month to two months. And I have bills to pay and stuff. So I was like, I don't know about this. And then um, the Lord really, and he would just put Brazil in my head. And it was funny because I just recently started talking to a friend of mine who I had, um, who I've known since I was 17 because he came out here for an exchange trip. And he's like a year younger than me. So he was 16, I was 17. But we haven't seen each other since then. And we started reconnecting again. And the Lord put Brazil on my head. And I was just like, okay, Lord, like, what the heck about Brazil? Weird. And then I started praying on it. And it's like, you know, when the Lord wants you to do something, like people come into your life. That is like, I met a girl who used to live in Brazil. And we became really good friends. I was like, okay, Lord. And then like, and it's, signs and it's from in your face everywhere. Right? Literally, yeah. <laughs> everywhere about Brazil was coming up. And it, it was super funny because my friend he's actually like a firm non-believer and he his roommates are firm non-believers and I actually asked him if he knows any friends or whatever I could stay with when I go out there because I really felt like the Lord was confirming that and he said oh you could just stay with me so it's super funny okay because I was yeah right because I was like okay because the Lord actually didn't tell me to like contact him he just told me to go to Brazil so it's funny because I kept praying about this because like I don't think this is really a good thing for like a, a single Christian female to be saying with a firm non-believing male and his roommates that are non-believing so I started praying <laughs> on that but the Lord used it for God like I can't even get over like I'll just we're limited on time so I'll just talk, say like the four biggest things that happened about the Brazil trips well and, 73 souls were touched well and first of all he provided the money to go amen well <clears throat> I I've, I've been saving for quite a while for um for just I just have not been spending my money so like I feel like the Lord has been wanting me to use my money for something like that for quite some time and he finally confirmed something and I felt like it was just like it just I just needed about like a week there and the Lord would provide wonders and honestly like guys 73 souls were touched I don't speak an ounce of Portuguese I didn't know <laughs> that that country does not speak English nobody speaks English in Brazil let me tell you that right now oh my golly and I was just like I learned about 20 words. You need to learn more than 20 words. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will intercede. Anyway, I um, I get, well, I'm first, okay, I have a, cu a couple transfers. And first, I, I told the Lord that I'm going to bring my Bible everywhere with me because this is a trip to Stein by him. So I'm going to, I'm going to always have my Bible out. If I want to read another book, it's going to be on the table. So anyway, okay. I'm in a cafeteria in Atlanta, Georgia, waiting for my next um, exchange to Rio. And I'm sitting there reading. And this guy's behind me doing garbage. And I see him. He's like talking about something. In Atlanta, Georgia, people call you sugar baby, honey. Yeah. It's a culture <laughs> shock. You got to get used to it. So I'm sitting there. I'm, hey, girlfriend. What you reading? A little bit of flavor there. And I turn around. I'm like, what? He's like, are you reading scriptures, honey? And I was like, I am. And he's like, 
give me a little bit of the flavor of Psalm 23, Psalm 91. Why don't you? I was like, I was in momentarily shocked because I was just praying to the Lord to use me in this cafeteria. <laughs> <It's a secret. laughs> and then I was like, okay, what do you want to hear first? Psalm 23 or Psalm 91? He's like, no, actually, I would prefer it if you stand up and you preach Psalm 23 to me. So I started, oh, I started saying it out loud to him, right? And then he starts reciting it back to me. And then the whole cafeteria like kind of stops and looks at us. And I'm like, this is a bit awkward, but this is Lord. This is the Lord. This yeah. is a bit awkward, but the Lord is helping. <laughs> so, wow. anyway, he starts going off. He starts praising the Lord and going, hallelujah, amen. And I was just like, what is happening? And then he wanted me to do Psalm 91. And then he starts crying and he gets super emotional. He's like, you know what, girly, I'm going through a really tough time here. This is not a safe city. And he's like, I was literally giving up on humanity before I saw you reading your Bible in this cafeteria. Oh. He's like, you inspired me so greatly. And he's like, the fact that you're even talking to a garbage man. I'm a black man in Atlanta where we're really disregarded. And you're talking to me as a white woman in Atlanta, Georgia, like I am just one of you. And I was just so floored. I was like, what is going on? Amen, Lord. And it's funny. I actually almost missed my flight because of this. But it's like the Lord decided it to happen because I thought boarding was at 740. But the plane took off at 740. So I literally got to my gate a minute before it closed. Oh so God. I was like, <laughs> talk about that is the Lord that right there. That was a divine and appointment and time. <laughs> Amen. Amen and hallelujah. And then wow. um, <clears throat> regarding, so regarding saying with my friend, his name is Joan, by the way, um, who's a firm non-believer. The Lord kind of like, he made all this happen so be beautifully. I don't even... I can't even recall how it happened, but I think my friend wasn't answering me, which is good. And the Lord said, okay, book a hotel for the first four days out of your trip. And literally it's nothing for us. It's $150 for four days at a hotel in Rio in our dollars. Like it's so cheap there. And so that's what I did. And, um, but when I, that was divine. Let me tell you, because I did not know that I had a strip club right beside me. <laughs> <laughs> or that there was like this on fire garage church right across from me so one day like everybody says Rio's Rio's dangerous or whatever and I'm like you know what everybody was beautiful there but I think I was also really covered but I felt like the Lord telling me to go out at night one day so I go out at like 9 p.m at night and I see like this on fire garage like holy spirit thing going on I was like I don't know if this is a band or whatever so I walk into I was like whoa this place is lit they don't speak an ounce of English but I, I felt like the Lord tell me to go to this this place first, and it's <clears throat> it's super funny. I don't know how people get this confused, but it was all meant for the good purposes. Anyway, I thought <laughs> this was a coffee shop, but this was a strip club. So I walk into, <laughs> I walk into a, a strip club. <laughs> it's a coffee bar. <laughs> anyway, I walk in, and they're trying to like they're trying to offer me money to go dance on stage because people are not as tall as me and I don't I have no idea what was going on but they're trying to offer me money to go on stage and I was like no I'm going to church I'm going to church but <laughs> you could come with me so like two strippers I guess were really curious and they came with me like to church which was really crazy and they come and like I didn't understand an ounce of what was going on at that church I just felt the Holy Spirit like nothing else I was like I don't understand anything but I feel it all and, and then afterwards, door? yeah, well, it was right across. So I, my hotel's here. The strip club is like, you go down and then you cross the street. It's right here. But then the, the church was like literally right across the street from my hotel. It was like two inter, inter streets over. So it was all like in a perfect triangle. So we're in there. And, and then afterwards, the pastor's crying. These girls are crying. I'm like, I don't know what happened. Maybe they're crying, laughing at how they thought. I thought like a strip club was a coffee bar. I don't know if they're laughing about that. But anyway, they tell me, they're like, he translates for me on this one. He's like, these two girls just gave their lives to Christ. I'm like, wow. whoa, are you, whoa, for wow. reals? And I'm just really irritated at myself because I always ask people what their names are, but I never asked those girls what their names were. And, but whatever, the Lord used me to help them bring them to Christ. So I'm like, amen and hallelujah. But that is what the Lord did for me being on that street corner. Yeah. He, he, I was like, what is going on? And then I go to my friend Joan's house and we walk in 
and I don't understand anything that's going on because I don't understand their language, but I guess, so he has one other roommate. It's him. And then it's his roommate, Nathan. And Nathan had a couple friends over that night, but I don't know that they didn't live there. But anyway, we, we come in and I guess they're all trying to look for their Tinder matches or whatever. <laughs> and I don't understand because I don't understand the language. <laughs> so um, Joel is a really respectful person. I don't feel uncomfortable with him or anything. So we go to his room and then he goes to take a shower and then I go to the hallway and ask Nathan what the Wi-Fi password was and there's all these guys there sitting and then one of them was like they actually all speak really good English because they're in university and I okay. guess they took English courses but one of the guys he looks at me he's like I don't mean to be rude but what the heck are you doing here and I was like it's not rude at all um but I felt like the Lord um put on my heart to come to Brazil to preach the gospel but also it's just a machino cherry on top that my dear friend João lives here so he's like he looks at me and his jaw nearly drops. He's like, do you mind if I talk to you later? And I was like, yeah, of course you could talk to me later. So later happens and he comes to me. He's like, I just have to, his name was Gabriel, by the way. And I thought it was so neat that he's named after an angel. I don't know if he actually is, but it's an angel's name. But anyway, he comes to me. He's like, I have to tell you that I had literally given up on the Lord. I literally had, I was praying and I was like, you know what, Lord, I'm done with you. I'm really done with you. If you don't make something happen today, I'm firmly not believing in you and I will, I will never come back to you. I'm telling you that right now. And, and he's he like, said that today. He prayed that that morning. Oh my and then goodness. I walk in the door and he's like, what the heck? And he's like, right. you know what? God is real. I don't know what's happening. So it's funny because the Lord was telling me, I never told you to like message Mo about staying with any of his people or him while you were out there. But the Lord made it come full circle for good to bless this guy named Gabriel bonkers i was like praise so i'm still praying for him because he is um his parents don't approve of him going into french studies or whatever and he wants to support his family so if you guys want to keep him in your prayers and also joan in your prayers because he's a firm non-believer who is a dear friend of mine and then the last crazy story this so many stories but this is the last like most definitive story ever my last day in brazil was on tuesday and I'm walking down the street and I go to a cafe and um, I'm everywhere I went, I asked how I could pray for people. And the crazy thing about Brazil is when you here in Canada, when people ask you, how can you pray for them? Even non-believers know what you mean when you ask them that. But even if it's translated in their language, Brazil doesn't know what you mean. I guess people don't ask them that ever in Brazil. Oh. Like even translated in their language, they're like, what do you mean? I don't get what you mean. I'm like, you know, to Jesus, like pray to God for you. Like you've never, nobody's ever asked you that. They're like, no and I'm like what wow. I was blown away so Brazil needs help but <clears throat> that blew me away so it took a lot of new translations and more people to help me ask what they need prayers for but I'm walking down the street and I was at this cafe for three hours and I prayed for a couple of these ladies who were suffering with depression and stuff but I'm walking down the street and I want to go to the mall next because I'm just really curious what a mall looks like out there and I'm like the Lord will bring somebody in my path I'm walking and I pass this shop that says barber slash tattoo shop <clears throat> and I'm like okay I'm so confused does does Portuguese call that barber or tattoo because it has both names I'm like I'm so sad. anyway I gave up on it and I kept walking and then I really it was like I don't even know like a lightning bolt to my system that I had to go back and look at that shop and I'm like okay Lord I'll go back so I go back and I look at it and I walk in and like literally they have about 50 staff and the one person that speaks English was working that day. Call, talk about praise the Lord. So I walk in and I'm like, um, does like, okay, I, I, I instantly just start speaking because um, Vosse Fala Iglesias says, do you speak English? And I quit saying that. I just started speaking English because if people understand me, they'll just answer me. So anyway, I was asking, I was like, is this a tattoo or a barber shop? And one of the ladies was like, well, it's both. And I was like, oh my gosh, praise the Lord. I was like, is there any like, um, because I I have one tattoo, it's a butterfly on my back, but I've always kind of wanted a second one, but it's pretty expensive in Canada. Like it's about $300 in Canada. And it and it has always been the word ifafa, which is from Mark 7, verse 34, which means um, be open. When Jesus spits on his hands and heals the deaf man and opens his, opens his ears to hearing again, and I just love it so much because it has so many meanings, like be open to new opportunities. And it was like so fitting for that trip. Like if I had not been open for that trip. So I was like, yeah, so I that had that was not planned at all. That was not planned at all. So I walk in and she says, there's actually like nobody doing tattoos today, but you can book an appointment. So I was like, oh, dang. I was like, 
I thought that'd be so sick because this is like my last day in um it's my last day in Brazil and it's my first time out of the country so I thought it'd be a mem memorable tribute and then she's like you know what just one second one second and she like contacts a few people and she's like okay there's this girl her name's Beatrice and she's gonna come in for you and I was like praise the lord hallelujah so <clears throat> this girl comes in <clears throat> pardon me and she doesn't speak an ounce of english we're literally google translating the whole time it's so funny she's asking you what this tattoo means and everything when she found i'm going to show you guys the tattoo this i don't know how well you can see it there but this is the okay, tattoo you move your arm a little bit down down a little bit flow yeah a little bit yeah can you see it well this is the tattoo ibapa and when she found out what the tattoo means, she instantly started crying. She started bawling her eyes out. And I was like, okay, what is happening here? And she translated on her phone that she was literally just about to off herself because she was such in a depressive state. She did not know what would have happened to her that day if she hadn't been called in to do that tattoo. And I got really emotional. I was so emotional. And then she started crying. And then she started putting praise and worship music on. And it was just, <laughs> I'm surprised this tattoo got finished because we were crying so hard. <laughs> but honestly, like, praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Like, when the Lord puts something on your spirit, don't even question it. Just do it. But so many oh. stories, but these are the four most impactful stories that happened in that trip. It was oh, just, yeah. So, Brittany, when you said she was going to off herself just to to clarify that for some people you mean she she had planned to commit suicide yeah it had been on her mind all that day yeah okay That's so what she if, was doing, yeah. if anyone is listening right now and and are in a, de, de, a state of depression or feeling alone or lost um contact somebody because you're not alone and there's a lot of people that care and love you yeah just contact mm -hmm. somebody so i just wanted to hit that in there Mm -hmm. yeah so I didn't mean to interrupt but I just had to snick that in no, that's okay <laughs> that's okay I was basically done with what I was saying too those are like the the best parts about Brazil like so you, the trip on what the Lord sent me to do but but you said you you um there was 70 something people you prayed for or 73 souls every person that came into contact I asked them I said how can I pray for you what it was funny, one of the people on my flight over, his name is Charles, and he's actually training for the Olympics. So if you see this man named Charles on the Olympics, be like, you kind of know him. But anyway, um, he's <laughs> he's in the rowboat. He's in the rowboat Olympic competitions and everything. And then some people were saying that um, when I asked them that, because, you know, I was, you know, if you ever want situations to go differently, like, don't even, like, the Lord has such, he, I can't even. The Lord has such a wonderful thing in store if you want. Cause I was like, you know what, Lord, that like that crazy opportunities happen that like, that like somebody come into my path where I could just like wham them with your spirit. But I'm like, the Lord used me in subtle ways, which I'm cool with because I'm a, I'm not one of those people that like go on under both that scream and preach. I'm like, I'm more of a soft soul. So that's why I was like, Lord, how the heck are you going to use me? But I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to go with it. And, and yeah, there was. You're just right, like, amen. You're so obedient, yeah, amen. And hallelujah, there's so many people at the cafes, like the ones that understood what I was saying. They were like, I have been so depressed for so long, nobody's prayed for me. One girl, I actually, it was funny, I was in mass. I went to, um, I'm not a, I'm not really a firm Catholic anymore. I, I really enjoy mass, but I'm more of an evangelist now, like, I'm more, um prophetic and I, I like more of that sphere of the church instead of the catholic way but I still love mass so I went to um I went to mass out there and I was just sitting there and I was like lord I want to do some like missionary work with some groups out here and I was sitting there and I was like oh, I wonder who speaks English around here because there's so many people but I was like nobody speaks <laughs> English around here I was like lord you'll direct me you'll direct me and I was sitting there and I looked behind me and there's this girl at the back of the church and I went up to her her name is Renata by the way and I go up to her and I was like, Voce fala igles. That's what I was still saying that because I, I was like, somebody, and she's like, I do actually. I was like, praise the Lord. I got so excited. I felt bad because I screamed in mass when everybody's praying. I'm like, I'm so amazed. <laughs> and she was like, she got super emotional. And she said she really greatly needed encouragement that day because she doesn't, she does office work. And she was just, she just really needed encouragement. And she was just really excited to meet somebody who was just so on fire for God, because 
I guess she had a dear friend that passed away three years ago who was just 34 years old. And she has been a bit like a bit upset with God, I guess, since because she that's somebody who's such a dear friend of hers passed away so young. Mm-hmm. And she said to another young person that's so on fire to do God's work was really refreshing to her soul. And then she actually walked me around and she introduced me to some things that it was just, oh, it was just so amazing. And then I just, oh. and then one of the, one of the times I was in church, um, this guy, um, I think he's in his early, early forties. His name was, um, I always get his name wrong. My bad. I think his name was Klavlos, Klavlos, I think. But anyway, he was Google translating with me and he's like, you know, it's so nice to meet like such a a person who's so young and so on fire for God. He's like, you greatly encouraged me because I guess he's one of the leaders in his church back home. Cause I think he lives in St. Paulo, but he comes to Rio sometimes. And he said, you just, you just inspired me for a new sermon for my church. And I was just like, praise the Lord. Just <laughs> oh, when the Lord calls you to do something, do it guys. Don't even question it. Just be like, you could be like, what the heck? You could be like, God, you're crazy, but just do it. <laughs> But there's an obedience and a trust that you've learned. Amen. Amen and hallelujah. Yep for doodles. Yep for so far the Lord has put on my heart for next year is Egypt. The year after that is Peru and the year after that is India. But he hasn't put anything else on my heart. But he's put those on my heart. I'm I'm a bit skeptical about Egypt, but I shouldn't be because everybody's like, oh, there's a lot of places women can't go alone there. Um there's so much crap going on there and everything, but I'm like, you know what? People said that about Rio. So honestly, like I was totally protected and safe in Rio. The only thing I will say to anybody that wants to go out there is really don't hit up uh, Cabana Beach. Don't hit it up. If you're by yourself, don't do it because I got scammed out of $900. Um, But oh. you know what's the, the positive about that is on my visa statement, I could see his full name. So I'm just praying that he used it wisely and he used it for God's, he used it for his family at least, you know, and I pray that he changes his heart over to really submit himself to God. So, yeah. Wow. So just, just the level of trust to fly across to a different country by yourself as a single yes. <laughs> into, into a different country where you don't speak the language. That's pretty brave. <laughs> When you said that way, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> but you know, I, and I mean, we sing, we sing these songs like, "I'll go where you send me, pick me, I'll go," you know. But then to do it, yeah, you, absolutely, yeah, you did it. That's I that's, know that's amazing. That's pretty bonkers, actually. Pretty and, cray cray. But Crazy. you didn't wait for someone else to join you. You just listened to God and went. Amen. Well, I think it also helps that I've always been more of a doer than a thinker, which thinkers sometimes do better because they pray more where I pray a little less and I just do, I act on it. I act on it right away. So there's think a positive about it later. And a negative to that. <laughs> but that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Cause he brought it all for good and I was totally protected. So amen and hallelujah. <laughs> and, and if he's going to send you, he's going to, he's going to have the angels go before you as well. Amen. He's already in, um, he's already in tomorrow. So if he's sending you into your tomorrow, what he's already prepared for you, you'll be okay. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. For sure. When you were talking about being provided for, um, sure, I had the money saved up for the trip, but I'm talking about quite a few people paid for my meals randomly. That oh, was really? That was new to me. Yeah, they'd be like, thank you for doing God's work, like in the airports or whatever. I was like, how the heck did they know I was doing God's work? like where'd you come from I thought that was like an angel deposited or something and I was like I was talking to this one girl in the lineup because she was asking me what I'm doing to, going to Rio for and like this guy like 10 feet ahead of me like paid for my meal and I'm like whoa and I found out he's actually a pilot and his name is Steve so the names I mentioned you could pray for all these people <laughs> that's really cool so mm-hmm. so a lot of times people want to do stuff but they don't have the time or they don't have they don't have the money or you know something happens that they they don't get there but when they see you go and you're doing it they can support you and and so then they're part of what you're doing absolutely oh i never thought of it that way yeah because you're you're doing it and you're taking you're taking them with you but when they're supporting you they're you're taking them with you 
That's so true. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So Brittany, what would you say to encourage other people? Like you, you are so energetic and so positive and <laughs> well, you are. <laughs> um, so what, what would you say to encourage other people to, to reach out and not be afraid? I would I say we can, we can just, get in our own heads and hold ourselves back. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. How would, how would you encourage people? I would say choose every day to be great. Like this is not just a good day. It's not just an average day. Every moment and every second is a joy filled moment to spread your love and your joy to other people. And I don't know, that's what I think about all the time. I think that's why when, when you practice something so much, it becomes more alive in you. So even when I haven't been really happy or really positive in the day, I just, I just tell the Lord to ignite me with his joy. And then I just practice it. And then it just becomes extra and extra and extra. And I just, I don't know, to just, you know, every day is, um, every day you're growing into who you meant, you, you're meant to be. Every day is a day that you're creating yourself more beautifully, more wonderfully. Like if you look at caterpillars, for example, like they may look cringy now, but they turn into these beautiful butterflies and they spread their wings. And just like, if you look at anything, if you look at the wilted grass, it grows and then you know, just every, everything has so much beauty to share. And like, if I'm ever feeling down, I always go for a walk and I look, I look at a crushed can and I'm like, you know what? It's crushed, but it's beautiful. It's a colorful, beautiful can. And it's so full of life. And it was full of good pop or sizzle and pop and things like that. I don't know. I just think that's where my mind goes. You know, I'm just, I guess I am quite an exuberant person, but just to find, I don't know, just every moment and every second has so much joy, you know? I'm just in love with life and in love with people and in love with all seasons. So I don't know. I would say just practicing joy and gratitude. Gratitude helps so much. If I'm ever feeling low, I'm always like, you know what? I'm thankful I got toilet paper and I don't have to use the grass because that'd be very uncomfortable. <laughs> so I look at my toilet paper roll. I'm like, thank you, toilet paper. Thank you, Lord, for busting. Because <laughs> we just went, well, we kind of just went camping and we hiked in the middle of nowhere and we kind of, we had used grass because we couldn't find our way back. So, and that was uncomfortable. So I came home and I thanked the toilet paper. So <laughs> things like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> we can use every opportunity, every, every day as an opportunity to be the best person that we can be. Yeah. To take God. And so it's a, it's an opportunity to take God with us where we Absolutely. go, where he sends us. It's an opportunity to, to bless others and to encourage others. Yes, amen. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for sharing your stories, Brittany. This is no this, problem. This is fun. Heard heard a little bit about Brazil, and and uh, I'm sure there's other people out there that might want to might want to go visit there now. <laughs> Rio de Janeiro is the bomb dot com and has very good espresso. Great espresso very yes. good <laughs> well thanks everyone for dropping in and we'll see you again next time bye-bye for now toodles <laughs>